I'm originally from Mexico City, and that's where I grew up. I came here when I was 10. I didn't know the language. I didn't know anyone. So it was, it was a very rough first year. And I was a teenager, and one day we were driving down the road, and we saw Alma and Ismael, who were pastors here at the time, struggling with a bunch of kids. They were having BBS. And so they saw them struggling, and they stopped. And they say, what are you guys doing? Do you guys need any help? And they're like, well, we're trying to run BBS, but it was only the two of them and like 20 or 30 kids. So we stayed and helped. And at the time, there ha they didn't have a music team or a worship band. And I would sing, and Amma would try to play, and bless her heart. <laughs> and Ismael will try to sing. For a few months, I was the leading voice. So, <laughs> Uh, we will have a lot of fun in the practices because obviously I don't sing, but she was very uh, polite in, in, in like encouraging me to say, you're doing great, you're doing great. <laughs> and, I, and eventually I realized that no, I was not doing great, but she was just being nice, you know. And <laughs> Ever since then, we became friends. Then different things happened in the family. My parents got a divorce. I didn't see my father for a year. And my, my mother was depressed for about a year. It felt like my family was falling apart at the time. And the church was the stability that I needed. I found a family. There was a missionary and she stayed at her house. And when she left, she said, God has great plans for you, so you get ready. <laughs> I said, no. But don't we all run away from, or try to run away from it? After high school, I became a dental hygienist. I got married to Jorge. I had my, my first born, Camila. During that process, I was running away from God and God's calling in my life. I found Alma again, and she said, well, what have you been doing to get ready? Because you know the call is still there. No matter what you do or where you go, the call is still there. I just put my hands in the air and I said, I'm done, just do whatever you have to do. <laughs> and that's how, that's how I ended up here. One of my passions is teaching. I want to empower the congregation and every member to not only grow in their faith, but to really be that light for somebody else. So the Hispanic House of Studies at Duke launched a new initiative called the Hispanic Latino Preaching Initiative and I have learned a lot. Getting to know other pastors and hearing from their experiences and stories, it's a such blessing for the Hispanic Latino community. I have seen her preach, and you can tell the growth from remembering Luz, again being this sweet high schooler, to now being this confident pastor. When I think about the future, especially for Unidos por Cristo, I think about our youth and our children, trying to create uh, safe spaces and spaces where they feel like they belong has been one of my, my goals and one of my priorities. Creating that for them um, so that they would feel free to make them feel the way I felt when I first walked in here.